All right, everybody, good afternoon. It's time for another one of these because the Mariners have played 70 games now. They have played 70 games and won 40 of them. It's not often they get off to a start as good as this. It's very rare that they're looking this good this during this part of the season. Usually, they end up having to go on a hot streak to get back into it in the second half of the season. And instead, here we are actually building distance in the AL West. We are starting to, I'm not going to say run away with the division, but we are putting ourselves in a position to where we might look up at the All-Star break and go, wait a minute here. We're, we're, uh, we got to look deep into that rear view mirror to see somebody chasing us. Like that's on the table. And I, um, I, I got to admit it hasn't always been pretty. The last 10 games in particular, the offense has really, really struggled to put up crooked numbers, but they have won. And when you consider the injuries that they're wading through right now, when you consider the circumstances of things right now, I think we're all going to have to be pretty satisfied with that. Uh, before I get into the team as it stands right now, I do want to ask about this. I don't know how Baseball Reference does their playoff odds, but I believe the Mariners' playoff odds and World Series odds have plummeted over the last 10 or so games, even though they've won almost all of those games. Like, I think it was like 85% to make the postseason and somewhere around 75 or 8% to win the World Series. Now, I know these numbers don't mean anything, but how can the odds go down so significantly when the team is winning and the teams in the division that rival us are struggling? I don't know what happened here, but this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Unless, uh, like, were they getting the numbers wrong initially? Because I always thought the numbers were a little bit suspicious. Um, there was a point where we were, like, half a game up on the Rangers for the division lead, and they had us at, like, 85% to make the postseason. And I was saying that didn't feel right. But if that was the case, the odds should be much higher now, not lower. So regardless, 40 and 30 through 70 games, really good 10-game stretch here in terms of result. Not necessarily stellar in terms of process at the plate, but again, they're surviving injuries right now, so I'm not really going to get on that part of it too much. It's understandable that the offense is having problems. If you look at the lineups they've had to trot out there lately, it, it makes sense that they're struggling to get hits, and we should just be lucky they're getting hits at the right times and bunching their success together enough to w win. It's not big, impressive wins. It's not wins that make us look like a contender, but they are wins. So, basically, Ty France starts to play really, really good at the plate, starts hitting the ball really well, and then he gets hit with a ball and goes on the IL. Luckily, it looks like he'll be back pretty soon. But that was obviously a big chunk taken out of this offense, going from Ty France to uh, Locklear, who, by the way, I want to give Locklear some credit. I think he's actually played uh, respectably since he got called up. I, um, I The numbers are not necessarily stellar, but it's such a small sample size. I'm not talking about that. Um, to me, Locklear is... He looks like he belongs. It's kind of like Ryan Bliss. Ryan Bliss isn't playing great, but he looks comfortable. He looks, he doesn't look overwhelmed. And at the very least, what I see from Locklear and Bliss is making me excited for the future. I know the present isn't stellar, but the present isn't that bad either. So shout out to those guys. They've helped. They've found ways to help. They've found ways to make this work when. Um, there, there was definitely a scenario where losing France and I'm even going to say Polanco could have been devastating. But uh, yeah, you lose France and obviously we were down Polanco for a little while here. He should be coming back soon as well. So the offense is just kind of undermanned. We've had a couple of games lately where the 7-8-9 was Canzone, Locklear, and Bliss or some combination of Robles. Locklear and Bliss, or Robles, Canzone, Bliss. It, it's it's tough. When that's your 7-8-9, I'm not surprised the offense is having problems. 
Crawford slowly rounding into shape here, starting to play better. Had some home runs, started to uh, hit for a little bit of power here. Uh, Luke Rayley continues to be a really, really fun player to have. Julio, the, I don't know what happened to the power. I don't know where the power is. Maybe it's just not going to be here this year, but he's playing better. He's making meaningful contributions. He's doing things to help this team win. And you couldn't have said that about him at some points during this season. Garver has been way better. Garver has actually been uh, a really, really good hitter over the last two weeks, I want to say. Really, really starting to come into his own. Cal continues to be a monster in late game situations, even though the overall numbers are not great. And by the way, I, I, you could you could kind of copy and paste that statement for Hanniger as well. And that's kind of my one fear about the rest of this season, that we're going to play Cal and Hanniger so much, they're going to have nothing left at the end of the season. They're going to be dead when we get to the playoffs here. So I'm really, really hoping that we can do something to mitigate the usage of those guys. It's brutal right now, especially for somebody like Cal, who you know has to line, who who has such a hard job behind the plate. I, I don't care if Zavala is terrible, and I'm 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 I agree he probably is. Zebi Zavala is probably terrible, but play him every now and then. We'll take the diminished value of the position and try to save something in Cal Riley's uh, gas tank for the end of the year. That's what I'm going to say. So I can definitely see this all coming together. It's starting to really, it, it's starting to really feel like this can come together in a way that we're feeling really good about by the end of the season. Get back France and he gets back to the way he was playing right before he got hurt when he was really hitting the ball well. And Polanco has to come back and do something. Polanco has to at least be a better hitter than Bliss. Like, uh, Bliss obviously has speed on him. Bliss might even be a better defensive player at this point, which is, I mean, that's kind of sad that we're saying that, but it might be true. But if Polanco can at least be a better hitter than Bliss, okay. Now you're talking. Now you're cooking here. You've got Rojas, who has cooled off really, really extremely, of course, but he was always going to. But he's still providing quality at-bats, not not down on Rojas, really. And it's starting to really be believable this can come together. But it has to happen. Like, what if France has completely lost his timing when he gets back here? What if he's completely lost, the, at the very least, the gap power that he had for a little bit there, where he was actually hitting home runs and doubles for a little bit before he got hurt? If his season has been derailed, then while I want to give a lot of credit to Bliss and Locklear for coming up as kids with very little MLB experience, if any, and finding ways to help us win and not looking completely lost. Hard for me to believe that this is a serious contender with those guys forming meaningful parts of this lineup. So I'm not going to kill the lineup. It's been, it's been tough, right? Like I think over the last 10 to 15 games, our batting average as a team is like 210 and we've won almost all the games. We've won almost all our games. We lost a game where we had an eight, nothing lead and blew it. And then we lost that game to Oakland where they almost uh, no hit us. Other than that, it's been really, really good. We had the one eight to four loss against Kansas city and Kansas city is really good. So there's nothing much to say there, but this team has won a ridiculous number of games with this little offensive output. But I'm going to reserve judgment until some of these guys come back. Uh, pitching, pitching's been great. Um, Miller, I was going to talk about how I'm a little worried about Miller in this video. I was going to do that, but uh, he was so good yesterday. I, I guess we just got to let this play out and see what happens here. Um, he had really, really cooled off for a bit there. The Royals really beat him up. And I'm sure he's sick about losing an 8 nothing lead, but it happens. You don't want it to happen, but it does happen from time to time for even a great pitcher. So we'll see where that goes. Gilbert, great stuff. Castillo, great stuff. 
Kirby had an awesome start in a situation where I just thought he was going to get lit up. I thought Kansas City was going to punish him. He was just going to beat the absolute crap out of him. He didn't let it happen. He was great in that game. Um, we survived the injury scare with Wu, looks like. Looks like he's going to be okay. Uh, we sur survived the Jonathan Diaz start where I actually thought he pitched okay. Like, he kept us in the game and we were able to come back and win it. Uh, I, Hancock might be starting today. Uh, game starts in like three and a half, four hours or something. Um, maybe we'll survive that one too. We'll see. I'm not going to sweat it too much. We've already won the series. And yeah, there's, there's not much to say about the starters. They've been killing it. I am still a little worried about Kirby because I feel like he might be injured right now. But with that way he played against Kansas City, I'm going to have to just sit back and let that play out because he was so good in that game. And it seemed like he understood the assignment in a way that he sometimes doesn't, where he was willing to go outside the zone. And then you get to the bullpen, which, I mean, the 8 nothing game is inexcusable no matter what. But if we had Munoz healthy, I'm sure that doesn't happen. I'm sure we put him in at the end of the game and he takes care of business. Um, <clears throat> so... Even even that loss had something to do with the injuries, even though it never should have gotten to that point. But um, it it it's been kind of a miracle that we've been able to thread the needle here with um, the issues that this team has had with keeping health in the bullpen. Stanick was unusable for a few games there. I think mostly because of overusing him. He might have been a little dinged up in one of those games. I'm not sure. I'm not a hundred percent. But I do think that Stanek's lack of availability in a couple of those games had something to do with usage. And we've had to survive the struggles of Bauman, who really, really doesn't look like he's bringing too much to the table here, unfortunately. And we've had to lean heavily on guys who you just don't totally trust yet. We've had to lean pretty heavily on guys like Thornton to get big outs, Voth to get big outs, Saucedo to get big outs. And over and over again, they've they've done it. So the fact that you're finding ways to escape these games with wins, the fact that they're holding, the fact that they're keeping the game alive for the for the offense to eventually do something and get the win, I I can't say anything but great things about it. Losing your star closer, and I am calling Munoz at this point a star closer. I don't know what else to call him. Um, that should be a death knell for a bullpen that is currently this thin we have already down spire um we did find a little something with colin schneider i actually thought that schneider was actually pitching pretty good but he's already back on the 40 man so i guess we didn't necessarily believe in what we were seeing and other than maybe that royals game you can't blame much of anything on the bullpen right now and that's with all the injuries and even that Royals game, I don't really think you can, in good faith, say that's the bullpen's fault. All right. So, life's good. Life is good right now. Life is better than it feels like it should have any right to be. And as a Mariners fan, you have to be really happy with the way the team is playing right now, I think. Um, there's a belief that it can get better, especially offensively. But the fact that they've gotten 40 wins out of 70 games so far is kind of remarkable. And the second half of the year, schedule is not bad for the most part, although partially because the teams in this division have gotten off to such bad starts, which I don't know how confident we're going to feel about taking on the Rangers or the Astros down the stretch. But, I mean, they're, they're not good so far this year, not really. And we're getting more days off in the second half of the year. Hopefully we get a full second half of the year from Brian Wu because he's only had six starts so far and he, I don't even know if he's going to get to 10 by the break. And if Spire can re rediscover his form, it, it's a complete team. All right. See you guys later. I'm feeling good. Go Mariners. Life is good right now. Just have to, uh, just have to survive these last chunk of games dealing with all these uh, injuries in the bullpen and in the lineup.